Last time, Corbin joined me to ride a section of the west coast to a harbour called Moss Landing. We headed out sailing on his boat and came within a few hundred metres of some whales. Southwards, I followed the coast for a few more miles before cutting inland over a 2,700 foot pass towards Bakersfield. It was on the other side of this pass where I started to consider where I was going to sleep that night. I'd been informed that Fort Hunter Liggett military facility was up ahead and that the road I was following bizarrely passed straight through it. Really not wanting to get caught out in the middle of some late night live fire training session, I decided that the sensible thing to do was stop a mile or so before the entrance and make my way into the woods to camp. Not wanting to get spotted, I moved as fast as I could through the brambles. Doing okay? Bugger. I'm riding on a one-man wheel park with some bill analog 36 inch in the cycle across the USA. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna get myself into. Do, yeah. My name's Ed, and I'm riding a unicycle around the world. Join me on this series as I attempt to cycle 4,000 miles across the United States of America. I'm okay, don't worry. Okay, cool. Man. Cheers, man. We, we saw you earlier today and saw your bike down, so just check to make sure you're okay. Cheers, dude. Okay, take care. Have a good day. You too. Relieved that he hadn't come to tell me off, I carried on down to the river and discovered this amazing place to camp. Oh, dear. Wow. Looking back, I realised just how special this campsite was. Frequently, while cycle touring, you just have to settle for somewhere unideal to camp just to get some rest. Ah, uh, this, this is something special. <laughs> so, it's certainly not every evening that you stumble across an area as perfect as this. Wow. Oh, I think I've got to... Uh... Whoa! Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. It was a warm evening, so I was certainly in no rush to get to bed. Quietly cooked up my pasta and carrots, sat down in the porch of my tent, switched off my torch, and settled in for the starry light show above. The next morning I pushed on to the military base. The road through it only ends up being about two miles, and apart from seeing an assault course, a helicopter, and a few armoured vehicles, it was all pretty uneventful. After exiting the base, I decided to make the most of the quiet road I was on to attempt a little drone flying, unicycle riding, multitasking. Having not yet tried out the automatic tracking, I took the spark up and began a quick test. This first attempt left quite a lot to be desired, even with me riding at a crawl, the drone didn't seem to be able to keep up, and the footage was super jittery due to the auto-tracking trying to keep me in centre frame. I concluded that to get usable shots in the future, I'd need to fly it manually, operating the drone and try not to fall off my unicycle at the same time. But due to the limited battery life and flight time, this test would have to wait. Onwards, I passed through the tiny town of Lockwood and visited the local store to restock with bread, butter and cheese. It was surprisingly expensive, at $12 for the lot. Sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and, and get the little bit of food from these small little places. And it's always more expensive, but whatever. You know, I need to eat. <laughs> I'm burning a lot of calories doing this. Um, and I'm not paying for accommodation, I'm just camping out. And I don't plan to pay for accommodation for my whole trip across America either. Uh, I'm just going to either stay with people or camp. That's the plan. Um, so I've got a little bit of extra extra pocket money for food, which is a good thing. Anyway, very much enjoying it out here. I just want to quickly interrupt this video and thank everyone that's currently supporting me on Patreon. Uh, if you didn't know, you can go over there and you can watch my videos a week early. Uh, and I want to say a particularly big thank you to Kentaro Sakino. Andrew Thomas, Kelly Jackson, Mark Paris, and Elijah Legenda. Um, you're supporting me on the third tier level, which means that I say your name in this little segment. So thank you very much. Woo! 
All right. Dark now, obviously. Just turned up at a place called uh, Hames Valley Grange Hall. Uh, and I just phoned up the owner and asked if I could camp here. He said, yeah. So I'm going to camp here. Um, it's, it's getting pretty chilly. Has been in development. Um, Greg just called and he said that I can camp in the hall. So that's really nice of him. Thank you, Greg, if you're ever watching this. Um, it means I'll get a bit of a warmer night because I'm actually pretty surprised how cold it is outside. I mean, I know it's February, but it hasn't been that cold yet. So I guess I'm entering colder weather. I'm, I mean, I've climbed up quite high, so I mean, that's probably why. But there we are. Warm nights in the hall tonight. Greg also invited me to use the hall's washing machine. What a great guy. After bunging in all my rags, I made the most of the evening by sitting down to stitch up a small hole in my pannier. I don't know if you can see that, just, just there. I'll do a close up. Um, but yeah, I mean, all my equipment is just starting to fall apart. My tent zips are starting to fail. My bags are ripping. It's got to a point now where it's really not, I mean, it's only six months of the trip left, if that, maybe five. Um, and it's just got to a point where there's just, it's not worth replacing stuff anymore. I'm just having to really just patch it and just jerry-rig stuff to get me back home. But it's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, this is a, a thing that if I leave it, it's just going to get worse and worse. And it's going to be a bigger job when I eventually do get around to doing it. Um, before I left on this trip, like over three years, well, yeah, probably about three years ago now, I got in touch with a guy called Carrie Gray. And he's, he lives in the US. I think he's from Baltimore. Um, and he had done a lot of unicycle touring and still is doing a lot of unicycle touring. Um, and I got in touch with him because on his website he said he might be able to build some custom unicycle bags. And these ones were really good. He sent them in the post. They're just obviously just fabric bags, exactly like these ones. Um, and they lasted me until Kyrgyzstan. And they were still okay, um, but they were starting to fall apart a little bit like these ones are. Um, so I got them replaced. I, I, I found a little old lady in, in Bishkek, in Osh Bazaar in Bishkek. And she, um, she made me some new ones. So I got the material and she made me some new ones to the exact same design. But the original design that Carrie made, they're brilliant. And I hope to meet him. I mean, I'm in the US, he's in the US. So hopefully at some point in the next four months we'll, we'll cross paths. But I know he's kind of moving around a bit and it, it might not work out, but it'd be great to meet him and kind of talk unicycle touring. Because as far as I know, me and him have probably done you know, the most unicycle touring out of anyone in the world. So that's quite exciting. So it'd be nice to be able to meet him. Anyway, that, that's where I got my bags originally. That's where the design came from. So get in touch with him if you want unicycle bags. I know that's a very niche market, but I'm sure there's a few people out there that are thinking of unicycle touring. And if you're thinking about it, you should do it. And you should get in touch with him and he can make you some bags. <laughs> Mad. Right, okay. Let's get these stitched. Revitalized from the toasty night in the hall, I carried on southeast across California, initially following Highway 101, but soon became bored of the constant din of the trucks, so opted for a much more peaceful route across ranch land. Travelling on loose tracks over the hills was of course much tougher going, but I'll take the trade-off of zero traffic and gorgeous scenery any day of the week. I gotta film this. How's it going, man? Even the first time I meet you, I just feel you are a kind of familiar person to me. A, a what person? Familiar. You're from, familiar. You're I from actually... England. Yeah. You traveled across, and you know, Europe, East Europe, uh, you know, East Europe, and China, and Australia, mm. and New Zealand, and finally made it over here. I just cannot believe it. <laughs>
Bobby had been following my journey online and amazingly had driven all the way out from LA just to find me. US is very different than Europe. So this is what you see here. Oh, it's fantastic. This, this road is amazing. Yeah. I have a bicycle here, yeah. okay? I like to find a place I can park my car. Yeah. I will ride you for a while. Yeah, let's okay. do it. While we pedaled together along Petroleum Highway, Bobby, who's ridden many miles in this part of the country, gave me a few words of advice for my desert crossing ahead. When you're in Bakersfield, I like to offer you a hotel stay. Okay, that's that's very kind of you. I yeah. think I'm staying with somebody in Bakersfield. Oh, is that right already? But uh, but oh. thank you, you know. <laughs> okay, I'm just thinking you probably need a place to get to the internet. You probably need a place to wash. You probably need a place to uh, rest and need a place to get yourself ready for going further mm. east because that is going to be tough and tough. Do you think so? Yeah. Well, what do you think is going to be tough about it? The tough about it is you're going through the desert. Mm. Okay, Death Valley, Nevada, whatever. You're gonna see miles and miles. Nobody's there. Uh, cold in the morning, potentially hot in the day, but it could be also windy, mm. low humidity. So it's just, uh, you know, you may have a battle, the, the, again, travel against wind. So, so there's all kinds of variables there. And with those slightly sobering words, this is where I'm leaving you for this instalment. Tune in next time to see if Bobby's predictions come to fruition. If you're feeling impatient and can't wait for next week's video, you're in luck, because the next episode is available right now on my Patreon. And if you're feeling really impatient, you can head over to Vimeo and watch the entire Ed Unicycles the USA series from start to finish over there. Your support is greatly appreciated. Well, this old thing ain't built for speed, but I love my trusty dusty speed. It'll get me around the world soon, then I'll try a full moon. I know my route is roundabout, but I sure as hell don't have a doubt. It'll get me where I'm going, as long as the wind is blowing. I'm well aware of dangers out there, and it's not that I don't care.